We are here at French Lick Resort here in southern Indiana, and we are really happy to be talking with Mike Nichols again, who is the chief business officer for the Epson Tour, just recently named that, previously yeah. the Sumatra Tour. Yeah. Uh, things have been going pretty good for the Epson Tour. Yeah, it's been a great year so far. Um, you know, we've had uh, some tremendous events and so certainly excited to get here to French Lick. I mean, we've played traditionally at the Donald Ross course, moving over to the Pete Dye course. A lot of exciting things happening here this week. Just uh, excited to get started. Started. Well, French Lick never does anything in a second-class way. It's always top shelf. It's always high priority. Um, and they're no exception again this year. They've come out with the biggest purse in Symmetra Tour, Epson Tour history. Yeah, it was tremendous. When we sat down last year and started talking about, hey, what's the future look like and what are we doing? And they say we want to have the biggest tournament in history, biggest purse, and we also want to, which obviously produces the biggest prize check in history. So they're going to, ladies are going to be playing for $335,000 this week. To put that into perspective, our average purse this year is two fifteen, dollars so it's significantly more. And then the winner is going to take home a little over $50,000 which uh, is really crazy because back in 2013, the number one money winner on the tour over the course of 15 events, she didn't even make $50,000 playing an entire season. So uh, this week here in French Lick is really going to change one of these ladies' lives. This is really a major on the Epsom tour because as he's talking, the money is much bigger than the average purse. But So that first place check will get you probably about two-thirds of the way to being in the top ten at the end of the year and guaranteeing your LPJ card for next year. Yeah, so if you look sort of historically, probably the tenth spot on the on the money list, which is what puts players onto uh, the LPGA, that um, that person is typically around seventy five thousand dollars. So if you figure, so if somebody this week comes in with about a thirty thousand dollars in the bank already, she will probably propel herself onto the LPGA just by winning this week. And then also people who may be a little bit further down the money list can certainly put themselves right into the mix, into the top ten immediately. Anybody who wins this week will be in the top 10 as we sit here this week. So this is a really important week on the uh, on the Epson Tour, and it is the road to the LPGA, because for these young women who are out here working, they're really playing at this point for the love of the game. They're trying to get to the LPGA Tour, where the money is really a little, quite a bit bigger, and they can earn some money, where here you're just trying to cover expenses and make it to that. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously a week like this, a typically a player will, it'll cost about forty to $50,000 to play a season on the Epson Tour. That's kind of the cost of the travel, the entry fees, everything that goes into it. So that's what players typically say, forty to 50000 So again, this week somebody will pay for their expenses for the year, and so they'll obviously be into, into the black with a win. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a huge week, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to change one lady's lives, as well as the other people. Obviously there's a knock-on effect of the other people who finish second and third, whatever, that the prize money that they win is also going to be hugely impactful in terms of propelling them into the top 10. So we switch from the Ross course over to the die course uh, this week. Have the have the ladies been talking anything about the difference or the or the course over there? Yeah, well, they said you know it's it's been funny because both courses are for anybody who's played both of them as we both have. They're super challenging in their own way. That you know have the Donald Ross, which has sort of the undulating greens, and that's what protects every Donald Ross golf course. Not super long, but super difficult. And then obviously the Pete Dye, um, built into the side of a mountain here. It's just uh, it's incredible golf course super challenging and the players were commenting about how many bunkers there are out there having played out there I'm sure we found many of them ourselves but uh, it's so different um, but the facility up there is tremendous the driving range is probably the best driving range and practice area that we have all season so uh, that also in itself is a treat because those are the kind of things that when they're preparing for a tournament of this magnitude, having that kind of practice facility available, and then obviously the challenge of the golf course along with the big purse, it's, uh, it's going to be a great week. Yeah, looking forward to it. A uh, couple more questions before I let you go. Uh, number one, uh, you're associated with the LPGA Tour. Marley Marcoux, uh has accepted a meeting or is going to take a meeting with Greg Norman. Uh, Greg has talked, wants to talk about LIV investment or LIV involvement in the LPGA. Um, do you have any ideas or thoughts about that kind of a meeting? Yeah, I mean, I'm not obviously not going to get any further ahead than the commissioner is at this point. But as you mentioned, she said she is willing to uh, meet. To the to my knowledge, at this point, there hasn't been a meeting necessarily brokered. But I think everybody realizes that. 
um, you know, having a conversation, you know, as, a, as an organization. It's our Maybe if the PGA Tour would have done that in the first place. Well, yeah, certainly, you know, we have the benefit of hindsight of what they may or should or shouldn't have done. But, you know, ultimately, as employees of the LPGA, it's our responsibility to look at any opportunity that's presented to us. So simply having a meeting is nothing other than saying, well, let's see what the opportunity is. And at the appropriate time, you know, presenting that opportunity to our members if we think it's worth it. But I think the biggest thing that Molly keeps coming back to is that you know we're going to make a decision based on the values of the organization and sort of looking at what's in the best interest of an organization that's been here for 72 years empowering women and you know sort of breaking the glass ceiling over and over so whatever we do it's going to be you know strategic and thoughtful and you know certainly aligned with the values of the LPGA that got us here. We've had the opportunity to talk to Mike several times over the years, uh, especially in our marketing area here in Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. Uh, the Sumatra Tour, the Epson Tour, uh, has a number of events, especially in Michigan. I think there's three now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but we understand you might uh, you might be leaving us. Uh, yes, this is, I've actually, I'll be here in French Lick this week, and then next week we're in South Bend, so as you mentioned, uh, through the Midwest, and then after that, I'll be leaving the LPGA after 16 years, 11 of which were spent running the Epson Tour. It's been certainly an honor to be a part of this organization, as I mentioned, it's been around for 72 years, so to have served, uh, you know, for the organization for a little bit of time and hopefully uh, made an impact, it's been uh, truly a pleasure. Well, Mike, we really appreciate the time you've given us over the years, and, and uh, we hope we wish you all the best in your new endeavors, and uh, we look forward to running to you down the road. Absolutely. Thanks, Fred, for having me on all these years.